good morning children let's continue our chapter 11 that is reproduction in plants already we discussed asexual reproduction of plants now we'll discuss about sexual reproduction so what is sexual reproduction sexual reproduction is the most common method of reproduction in plants in this process two reproductive cells called gametes are produced from the reproductive organs the two gametes fuse to form a third cell called the zygote the male gamete is a small cell with a nucleus and a little cytoplasm the female gamete is larger with a nucleus and a more cytoplasm the fusion of the two gametes is called children what fertilization it results in the formation of a zygote the zygote then undergoes cell division and growth and forms the new individuals okay now we see sexual reproduction in plants children here one figure is given you see this is ovary in this figure you see ovary integument zygote okay triploid endosperm cells now we we'll read about this term let's see in plants sexual reproduction takes place in flowers okay children you remember in flowers sexual reproduction occurs in plants you have learnt about the structure of a flower in class 6 let us first recall the parts of a flower a flower has four holes calyx corolla androecium and gynecium so children four holes we know calyx corolla androecium and gynecium consisting of sepals petals stamens and pistil respectively of these stamens are the male reproductive parts and pistil is the female reproductive part already you know in your previous class student just we recall then bisexual and unisexual flowers most flowers have both male and female reproductive organs okay means sepals sorry male reproductive part means stamens and pistils both are in one flower that flower is known as bisexual okay for example mustard pea rose sunflower petunia and china rose are bisexual flowers here you see structure of stamen stamen has anther and filament pollen sacs are there then structure of stamen and pistil each stamen has two parts already told you a long stalk that is called filament and a solen structure present at the tip of the filament called the anther the anther produces a powdery substance which consists of very minute pollen grains pollen grains are the main gametes pollen grains have a top protect coat this coat prevents them from drying up they are also very light and can be carried easily by wind or water a pistil contains or consists of ovary style and stigma so female reproductive part is known as children pistil and it is three parts that is style stigma and ovary you can see in this figure which one is ovary which one is style stigma okay ovary is the basal solen portion it continues into a long style which ends in a knob like part called the stigma the ovary contains 
one or more ovules the female gamete also called the egg is formed inside the ovule so ovules are present inside the ovary then pollination the male gamete present in the pollen grains needs to be transferred to the female gamete present in the ovary to bring about fertilization so how they transfer the transfer of pollen grains to the stigma of a flower is called pollination and this transfer can take place with the help of wind water or insects these are called the agents of pollination okay which are the agents of pollination that wind water insects are known as agents of pollination then types of pollination children two types of pollinations are there self pollination and cross pollination pollen grains are transferred from an anther to the stigma of the same flower or other flower on the same plant that is known as self pollination and cross pollination when the pollen grains are transferred from the anther to the stigma of a flower on an another plant of a same kind it is known as cross pollination okay here children you see in the same flower in the same flower anther and stigma pollen grains are transferred so it is known as self pollination but here you see different flowers are there here one flowers anther is there and another flower stigma is there so it is known as cross pollination clear about self pollination and cross pollination now comes to fertilization what is fertilization after pollination the fusion of male gamete with the female gamete takes place the process of fusion of male and female gametes is called children fertilization fertilization leads to the formation of zygote which develops into an embryo during fertilization the following events occur after landing on the stigma the pollen grains germinate and produce their tubes the tubes are called pollen tubes they carry the male gamete only one pollen tube reaches the ovule female gamete is present inside the ovule finally the male gamete fuses with the female gamete thus fertilization occurs so children here you see pollen grain here enter in this manner pollen grain enter in this manner this is pollen tube and ovary like this and fuse with the ovule okay then formation of fruit and seeds the following changes takes place after fertilization the ovary increase in size and becomes the fruit the ovules become the seed the sepals petals and other parts of the flower wither off how do ovules changes into seeds once the zygote is formed it divides rapidly to form an embryo the embryo is enclosed within a protective sheet coat which develops from the ovule wall the embryo enclosed in the sheet gives rise to a new plant okay then dispersal of fruit and seeds a plant produce many fruit if they are they were all to fall to the ground around the plant which produced them the seeds present inside would try to grow into new plant there would be hundreds of new plants growing close together and competing 
with each other for light water and minerals in the soil many would not be able to complete or compete and so they would die overcrowding is prevented by fruit and seed dispersal dispersal means transfer from one place to another place okay plants use a variety of methods to achieve dispersal of seeds and fruits the disadvantages of dispersal is that seeds may reach unsuitable surroundings in which they fail to germinate and grow to overcome this problem plants produce a large number of seeds to be dispersed this ensures that at least some of them would reach suitable surroundings where they may grow into new plants then means of dispersal seeds and fruits may be carried away by wind water and animals some seeds also get dispersed by special means then wind seeds and fruit dispersed by wind may develop wings or hair or become very light wind seeds are found in maple and drumstick hairy seeds are seen in oak and fruit of demodian then very light seeds are found in grasses so their weight is very light so they can fly or they can move one place to another place then through water coconut fruit is a good example in which dispersal takes place by water coconut is grown on the sea so the fruit is large and fibrous being fibrous after falling in water the fruit floats in it then water currents carry the fruit away from the parent plant to another surface or another place okay this is the figure you see then animals dispersal by animals is common in such fruits and seeds which have spiny structures with hooks the hooks stick to the bodies of passing animals and are carried away several kilometers before they are rubbed off and fall to the ground examples are gokru and janthium in balasam and castor seeds are dispersed when the fruit burst with sudden jerks so in this way seeds and fruits are transferred from one place to another place which is known as dispersal of fruits and seeds so this is about your chapter 11 children you read this chapter properly and also here some keywords are given or definitions is given you learn thank you have a good day